All right, you guys, in this episode, we're going to continue working on our rebuild of our Hemi engine here. I am still waiting on a couple of parts, but regardless, at the end of this episode, you will see a complete engine ready to drop back into the 300. Slather plenty of this engine assembly lube on here. Seems like this cam is completely dry at this moment. Now, I can already hear plenty of you yelling at me in the comments saying, why are you putting a stock cam back in this thing? This is a perfect opportunity to upgrade to a more aggressive camshaft and you can make some more power. None of that is wrong. That is true. It is a perfect opportunity and more power is always nice. However, kind of what I'm going for with this car is just a cool street cruiser, okay? It's not, it's not some powerhouse. And that being the case, the factory Hemi power, I mean, this is a pretty heavy car anyway. It's not going to be a, a complete rocket ship unless you put some real time into it. So this is just a cruiser, just a cool cruiser that's going to sound cool. So honestly, the stock Hemi power is going to be just fine. Um, there is a project coming up where I'm going to be building up the engine a bit more. And you'll see something a little bit more aggressive coming out of that. But this one, we're just going to leave her stock for now. last little bit's gonna be a tricky one. Gotta tilt the back of the camshaft up enough. There we go. Ta-da! All right, let's get that faceplate on there. So this plate is just the, uh, it does two things. One, it holds the cam in place. And two, it serves as a tensioner for the timing chain. All right, these bolts get tightened to 21 foot-pounds. All right, so the time has come to reinstall our lifters and our MDS solenoids. I'm gonna give you a closer look at these roller lifters. All right, so what you can see here, these are roller lifters like basically all modern lifters and they have little needle bearings inside of there and what happens to these lifters why you get cam lifter failures on these engines is that those little needle bearings go bad this guy no longer rolls it just stays still and it starts just hammering into the camshaft lobe which will eventually eat through the lobe entirely and just make it completely flat and your engine will start misfiring sending a bunch of metal through the engine now i'm not seeing anything wrong with my lifters that i have here uh, they all have the proper tension on them. There's nothing wrong with the bearings. So these are just going right back in the engine. So the lifters come in these handy little sets here of four. And what's really nice is that on the little plastic holder on the back of them, it says front or rear. So that makes it easy because this one in particular says front. So it just goes right in here. Just like that. Now, whenever you do a job like this where you're going to have the lifters out uh, or any sort of major repair, don't be afraid if when you first get the engine started up, you hear a rattling sound like you have bad lifters, okay? Sometimes it can take a little bit for these things to pump back up again. Don't be concerned, it's a normal thing. Um, you need to go out and drive it and get the engine through a full heat cycle. If you're still having lifter noise after about 20 minutes, then yeah, I would say you've got some sort of an issue going on there, but initially, don't really worry about it. And with these MDS lifters specifically, you have to go run them through an actual MDS cycle. So it has to drop down the four cylinder mode, go back to eight cylinder, do that several times. And that way you can start getting the lifter noise to go away completely. All right, now it's time to put the MDS solenoids back in. And I think I'm going to clean these things with a little bit of brake clean. Uh, they are pretty dusty slash dirty. So I'm gonna clean these things up and we'll toss them in. All right, let's get these guys installed. So 
Same deal, you'll kind of want to give these things a little bit of a twist as you install them because they do have rubber O-rings and if you press straight down, there's a pretty good chance that you could actually cut one of those. So it's best to just give them a little twist as you put it in, you'll feel it slip right in. All right, so we've got the lifters back in, we've got the MDS solenoids back in. Time to flip this thing upside down, start getting the pistons back in. Real quick here, guys, when you're putting these pistons back in, they do have a cast in portion of them that says F for front, so that means it faces the front of the engine. And they also even will have an arrow kind of printed onto the top of the piston here. Well, you're not gonna be able to see it, but, oh. Oh, ah, there it is. See, so there's an arrow that points towards the front of the engine. So you make sure that that is in there correct and that way you don't have to worry about piston orientation. What you need to do this is a piston ring compressor of some kind. Um, this is a super cheap 10, 11 bucks, something like that. They're not great. I mean, they work just fine, but you kind of have to just, just make sure you're going slow and taking your time with it. Um, crank it down and we'll slap these things in. The thing you gotta make sure about with these spring compressors is that they are seated 100% against the deck surface because the rings like to slip out from behind. So I can give a little tap, make sure we're fully seated, and then there we go. So we're moving right along. We've got our pistons back on our block. Everything is all torqued down. Now we're gonna move on to the heart of this video, which is the timing system. I'm gonna move you guys in close and show you all the little details about setting timing on a Hemi engine. All right, so first I wanted you to get a look at the exact components involved in the timing of the engine. So you've got your timing chain, obviously, and in this case, you'll notice that there are plated links, some colored links on here. Those are important for setting your timing. Also your oil pump drive gear that slides onto the crankshaft, there is a small timing mark on one of the teeth. The camshaft gear itself, again, there is a small dot on one of the teeth that you need to pay attention to. Now let's get it on the engine and I'll show you how it all goes together. All right, so the very first thing we wanna do is make sure that the crankshaft is at top dead center position. It's by far easiest to do this process with the engine all torn down like this to the short block because now you can verify visually that the number one piston is at the top dead center. So now that we know that our crankshaft is in the correct position, it's about 30 degrees past the 12 o'clock position for the keyway. Now in the camshaft, this one's really easy. It has this locating pin here. This pin just goes directly 12 o'clock. Straight to, I mean, you can kind of pinpoint it to the top of the engine here. That's a good, a good marker to go off of. So now your crankshaft is in the correct position. Your camshaft's in the correct position. Now let's bring in the gears and the timing. All right, so again, Chrysler made this very straightforward if you're doing it from scratch like this, dealing with the plated links. They make it very simple. What you're going to do is you're going to match the bottom plated link, the one with only one link, you're going to match that to the timing mark on the bottom of the crankshaft uh, oil pump drive gear. The double links on the top is going to go to either side of the dot on the camshaft gear, which the camshaft gear goes to the 12 o'clock position, that dot does. The crankshaft oil pump drive gear goes to the six o'clock position, down to the bottom, all right? So, that one on the bottom. There we go. Okay, so our signal link on the bottom is Verified with our dot on the oil pump drive gear. Our double links on the top. Our bracketing. The mark on the camshaft gear. Now we know that our camshaft and our crankshaft are in alignment. Let's go ahead and put them on the engine. 
So make sure that you have your tensioner for the timing chain pinned back. There's a few different styles of tensioners for these Hemi engines, but they're all very much the same idea. You basically just push them back, put some sort of pin in place to hold it back, and that way you can slide everything on. Now when you do this, you have to slide on the oil pump drive gear and the camshaft gear as a unit. You can't put the chain on afterwards. There's not enough slack for that. So they have to slide on together. The good news is, is that if you have these lined up and you have these lined up, it should slide on with no problem. And that way you kind of know for sure that you aligned everything correctly. So let's go ahead and do it. There we go. Make sure you have your fastener handy to at least loosely bolt on the camshaft gear because it is not tensioned and it will fall off. Okay, so you've got your chain on there. You've got your links in the correct spot. What we want to do now is go ahead and pull the tensioner and we want to spin the crankshaft two rotations. That'll bring the camshaft all the way back around again to our 12 o'clock position. Go ahead and line that up. And after you do that, make sure that both your lower link is in the correct spot and that your piston is at top dead center and that way you know for sure you have your correct timing. Okay, so you can see that my camshaft timing mark is at 12 o'clock position. My number one piston is at top dead center. And I know, because I can see that my lower link, or that my lower mark on the low pump drive gear is at the six o'clock position. So this whole thing is in time. Now something important to note is that because your teeth are not equal between the cam gear and the low pump drive gear, the colored links will move, okay? So you cannot go off your colored links after you make that first rotation. Eventually, if you do enough rotations, they'll line back up again, but even after just two rotations of the crankshaft, they're completely off from where they were before. So don't go by the colored links after you've set the initial timing. As soon as you move that crankshaft, don't worry about the colored links anymore. All you're gonna worry about is the Boston timing mark in the camshaft gear and in the oil pump drive gear themselves minute that this oil pump drive gear is installed, you can no longer see your timing mark on the oil pump drive gear. It's completely hidden. Even if you stuck a mirror under there, you're not going to be able to see it. So the timing is something that must be done before you put the oil pump on to make sure it's correct. Now, if you're just looking to do a cam swap on one of these engines, you don't have to take the heads off to do that. You can do it with those remaining on. It is tricky. It's not the easiest thing in the world. In order to get the oil pump off of there, there's a pickup tube bolted in here. And with the oil pan on there, it's really difficult. What you gotta do is unbolt the four bolts for the oil pump, then you can shift it, you can twist it just enough to get to the bolt for the pickup tube, thread that out, grab the bolt before it falls into your oil pan, of course, and then you'll be able to just kind of either rest the pickup tube down into the oil pan and then you'll be able to pick it back up with a magnet and stick it back in there. That way you can get the oil pump off of there and the timing gear and the um, thrust plate for the camshaft. You'll get, be able to get all that stuff off if you're doing a cam swap. Then you'll be able to put that all back together again. The trucks, you cannot do that. The oil pickup tube runs underneath and it's actually bolted in two different spots to the windage tray. So you are not able to do that. You have to remove the oil pan on the truck Hemis. But the 300s, the Chargers, um, the Challengers, all those, you can do a cam swap without removing the oil pan. All right, you guys, that's going to be it for this episode. We have the cam timing all set up on this engine. I promise you in the next episode, we are going to continue reassembling this engine and have it completely ready to drop in to our 300. If you could, go ahead and drop me some comments. Let me know what I could have done differently, what you would like to have seen, if you have any questions, comments, anything of that nature, let me know. I really appreciate the feedback. And guys, thank you so much for watching all of my videos. We'll see you next time on Reignited.